All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Quarkus Global Hackathon Office Hours. We are 20 minutes late due to technical difficulties. Um, it was a, a fun ride, but what we want to do is we want to continue to do this office hours. We may have lost some people initially, but we're going to record this, obviously, and uh, upload it to the YouTube channel so you can watch it after the fact, especially because we've got such uh, great content for today. We're going to talk about Quarkus for Spring developers as well as Quarkus on Amazon uh, Lambda, so serverless stuff. So it's a great conversation. Um, with that, let's get started. Uh, uh, first slide here. So the agenda, like I said, is we, I want to talk about some open discussions. We really haven't had too much activity yet. Hopefully that will increase over the next couple of weeks as people start to get into their actual applications. Uh, there are a, a few discussions going on. I want to um, talk about one of those items. And then, like I said, we're going to get into some, some demos and get you into some technology around uh, the spring compatibility as well as how you can, one of the best features of Quarkus is it's, you know, small footprint and fast startup times, which lends itself to serverless. Uh, so Daniel, I was going to do some uh, some work on the uh, AWS Lambda, showing us that. And then we'll uh, make sure everyone knows how to submit questions. So next slide. Um, next one. So I want to make sure everyone kind of knows where we're at in, the, in this whole process here. Uh, we are kind of knee deep in the middle of the hackathon. We're in the second office hours, so July 1st. Um, and like I said, I've got links here. Um, I've been saving, sharing the PDF slides so people have them as well. So the links are live so you can get access to it. But everything is being um, sent and streamed and recorded on the YouTube live channel. So the Quarkus channel is the best way to go. And as we move here, we've got uh, two more office hours uh, over the next two weeks on Wednesday, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Please, 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 if you've got questions or concerns or want to talk to experts, please submit those ahead of time. We'll make sure we have the right people on to help. And then uh, 22nd of July is the closing ceremony, and this is just going to be any help people need to make sure they get their application submitted and um, any requirements like you know summary videos and that kind of thing. And then uh, lastly, obviously, is the, uh, the judging, live judging. That will be taking place on October 14th. So uh, next slide. Um, once again, this is the YouTube channel. This is the, the best place not only for the hackathon, but more importantly, moving forward, there's great content here. Um, pretty much at a weekly cadence, there's also Quarkus Insights, which uh, if you haven't seen them, please check them out. They're great. Some members of the community are doing this type of informal discussions where they're really talking about a, I don't know, a technology, an extension, a guide, and um, really deep diving with some experts. So those are really good uh, to watch, so I recommend those. Uh, next slide, please. Um, how to submit questions? So the there's the main way, obviously, is the the Zulip chat. Uh, if you haven't registered, please log on and register. This is where the Quarkus experts are. This is where they live day to day in terms of uh, technical questions. We do have a what's called a stream on Zulip. Um, so we have a hackathon stream. So this is where you know we're posting links to these videos after the fact, these presentations. This is where uh, we'd like you to submit any uh, questions or you know, ideas you have for upcoming sessions. Uh, also on the, the Twitter account, make sure you follow our Twitter handle for the Quarkus uh, community. Uh, we're using the Quarkit hashtag if you want to talk about any cool insights, uh, issues, just general comments on the hackathon, please share on there and it will be distributed out to everyone. And then, as I mentioned, the YouTube live channel. Uh, next slide. All right. Um, the... So questions two and three we covered last week, but there's the one that came in that I thought was interesting is uh, someone asked around, do you have to use a cloud environment? And if so, which ones are you allowed to use? And then lastly, if, if we do require them, you know, will we provide cloud credits? First off, great idea with the cloud credits. The short answer is no, we're not providing cloud credits right now. Uh, we think it's a great idea, and, and if and when we hold additional hackathons, we're going to look at something like that to make it easier for you all to, to leverage a cloud provider. So we purposely did not want to put too many rules in this so that we do not have a requirement that you have to use a cloud environment. Even things like you know Kubernetes native subcategory um, obviously doesn't have to be cloud-based. It could be a local Kubernetes containerized version. Um, so we do not have a requirement for a cloud environment. Um, but with that being said, if you're interested and you do have accounts, uh, obviously uh, we are able to deploy to Kubernetes uh, easily through Quarkus extension so we could easily um, install on any of the cloud providers like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. 
Um, so keep those questions coming in. Just wanted to kind of keep running running tab here. So uh, next slide. With that being said, what I want to do is uh, turn things over to Georgios, who's going to talk about uh, Spring Corcus for Spring developers, and you're going to find this really fascinating. So go ahead, Georgios, take it away. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Uh, okay, so I just have like one slide, and then the whole rest of my uh, part here will be a demo. Uh, hopefully, you'll learn the Spring stuff. So, and um, as you probably have seen from the Quarkus guides, uh, we have a bunch of uh, uh, Quarkus Spring compatibility extension. So that what that means is that you can program with your uh, using your regular the Spring annotations you're used to if you're a Spring developer. So you can leverage your your Spring knowledge when you're coming to Quarkus. Uh, the the most important extensions we have, or let's say the most like uh, widely used, are uh, Spring dependency injection, Spring Web, Spring Data, JPA, uh, Spring Security, Spring Cache. We have more, uh, but these are the ones I'm going to show uh, right now. So I'm gonna close the presentation and I'm gonna head over to my IDE and I'm gonna start coding and there's probably gonna be a lot of mistakes while I'm live coding here, so uh, bear with me. So this is a simple project that I generated from uh, uh, code.quarkus.io. It's a spring project. So it has the spring web dependency uh, because I selected it uh, from the code generator. And because I selected the spring uh, spring support, it generates a controller, a spring controller, instead of a JAXRS uh, resource. So you can see that this is all spring. There's no JAXRS stuff here, no Rest Easy stuff here. Uh, so let's get started with the Quarkus dev. Um, so what Quarkus Dev is, I'm sure you've seen a bunch of videos already. Quarkus Dev is like the development mode. Uh, so I'm just going to start it here and I'm just going to live code and you're going to see all my changes uh, ref getting reflected immediately. Uh, so let's go here and say um, hello. So uh, that's the hello endpoint. So I, this was like the, the very, very, very basic REST controller. Uh, you just return hello. Uh, I was, I change the source code and of course it changes the reflected. So there's no difference when you're either coding with Spring APIs or like the Java E APIs, same thing. Uh, develop mode just works out of the box. Uh, so let's get into doing a little more uh, involved Spring stuff. Uh, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna return some JSON here. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna create this, uh, at this like let's say DTO. Let's call it greeting and add message and a getter and then I'm going to create what would be my business logic, right? Uh, so in the Spring world and the Java EE world, we usually call this a service. Um, I'm going to annotate it with the Spring component or I could have used the Spring service here. It doesn't really matter. Um, also, I'm going to read some properties. So I'm going to read a uh, configuration property. I'm going to call it greeting prefix. I'm going to call, I'm going to call it high. Uh, so in spring, what we would do is like we would say spring and then we'll say prefix here. And the way we inject that into the controller uh, with the spring APIs is through the value annotation. And I'm going to say greeting prefix. So that gets injected. Uh, you'll notice here that I did not use auto wired here because uh, you don't have to in spring. So you don't have to do that in Quarkus either. Um, public, I'm going to say greeting greet string name and return new, uh, come on, greeting, uh, let's say uh, prefix plus name. So the idea is that this will just return um, a domain object. Um, oops, sorry, this would be greeting here. And this would say, um, oh yeah, sorry, I have to inject the greeting service. So I would inject the, the class that actually has the business logic into the controller. I'm gonna do that with constructor injection. And here I'm gonna say greeting service greet. And I don't, I don't have a name here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a request param. So this is gonna uh, get param. And in spring we use request param annotation for that. And we'll say name, and we'll also, oh, sorry, request, request param, yes. And I'm going to say default value, the default value will be world. And here we'll go name. So now if I've done everything correctly, I should get JSON, and I did, uh, with world as the default uh, name. So if I do name George, I get hi, George. So all this, you, like you see the spring controller, and it's all, uh, spring annotations. There's no Java E here. The same with uh, the service. So it's just like writing uh, regular Spring. So you leverage your Spring knowledge. 
Um, so that was the that was like the the easy part, right? Um, so let's go and start adding a little more of the Spring APIs that we have. I'm gonna say let's go ahead and add some cache. So Spring cache. Uh, Spring Cache, um, Quarkus Spring Cache will bring in the uh, support for Spring's cache annotations. So I'm going to go to the service here, and I'm going to say Cacheable, which is Spring's annotation to cache something. Um, and I'm going to say the cache that I'm going to use is the Greek cache. So what, what I'm hoping to see here is that when um, I'm when we get a name, when we, we give the same input to the function, the method here, uh, we'll get the same result without having to call the method. So in order to, to simulate that, to demonstrate that, um, how, we, how that the method, the actual content of the method won't be called, I'm going to add a sleep here. Uh, so what this sleep will do is it'll simulate, let's say, like a slow call or something like that. Uh, let's call this ignored. Uh, save sleep. So the idea here is that like the first time the method gets called, uh, I'm going to see this like two seconds sleep, and then the, the uh, subsequent call with the same input, same name, I uh, shouldn't see it. So let's try that again. Okay, so I'm seeing the two. I saw the two second delay here, right? So the second time, and every time, every subsequent time, um, I didn't get the delay, which meant, which means that this uh, the the met the call the the body of the method wasn't being called because it was already cached. But of course, if I change the name, uh, I, I again get the, the delay, which means that it, it obviously caches uh, different uh, inputs. So that's exactly how spring caching would work anyway. So same idea here. Uh, everything just works out of the box. So after we, we saw that uh, really quick demonstration, Let's take it up a notch and uh, go for something uh, a little more involved. Let's do uh, Spring Data JPA, right? So Spring Data JPA based on Hibernate, of course. Uh, so we're uh, the, the. Let me actually add like uh, a little tip here. Uh, in Quarkus, in our Spring compatibility layer, what we try to do is we make uh, you reuse the annotations and the the uh, like interfaces from Spring, but the 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 configuration part. The, the little configuration you need to do, uh, you do it in the Quark specific way. So your programming, your actual business logic and you know, your infrastructure is in the regular Spring stuff, but the configuration uh, uses the regular Quark. So we're going to use some regular Quark properties to configure Hibernate and uh, and uh, the URL, the, like the, the URL for the database and everything. So I've already had those here. I've already copied those here. So what I'm going to, what I do here is that I'm going to use a Postgres SQL database, which I'm running locally as a Docker container. Um, I'm going to recreate the schema each time, and I'm also going to uh, seed the database with some data. Um, so I'm going to have, a, I'm going to create a book. So my entity is going to be a book. Uh, and I'm going to seed the database by providing a few books. So I have a few books here. So that once everything's up and running, uh, I'll have six books in my database uh, because Hibernate will, with in Quarkus, uh, you'll you get this import SQL feature uh, out of the box. So let's go ahead now and add the actual dependencies that I'll need. Uh, so I'll need, uh, yeah, Spring Data JPA and a JDBC Postgres SQL um, dependencies. That's it. So with everything configured here. Uh, I sh I'm now ready to uh, so I'll refresh IntelliJ so it picks up the Spring Data annotations. So I'm ready to go ahead and write my entity. Like I said, it's going to be a book. So I would write it just like I would write it with any other uh, Hibernate or Spring application. I'm going to call, I'm going to say BID is going to be the book ID. And I'm going to give it a few fields, name and private. Uh, integer, which will be the publication year. Uh, give it some getters and setters to make uh, serialization happy. Uh, and now, in two, in the true um, Spring Data JPA fashion, uh, all I need to do is create a repository, book repository that extends Spring's Spring Data JPA's CRUD repository. Uh, book, and the ID is a one. There you go, and let's create the book controller so we can actually access this. So 
So it's going to be a REST controller and request mapping. I'm going to say this is going to be under book. I'm going to inject the book repository. And I'm going to say iterable book find all return book repository find all. And it's going to be get mapping. So if I've done everything correctly, uh, I don't have to restart or anything. I'll just go here, hit book, and I auto magically see all my uh, all the books that I added. So let's recap what I just did here, right? Uh, I added a couple dependencies, which is string data JPA and Postgres. I configured um, typical hybrid, uh, sorry, Quarkus configuration, where I tell it where the database is and uh, then hybrid to recreate the schema and import data. Then I wrote my uh, my entity, I wrote my repository, which I almost didn't have to do anything because it extends to front repository, and then I expose it. Uh, so like like very, very few changes, stuff you already know uh, from Spring that you can just leverage in your Quarkus application, and it'll just work. So let's uh, let's do a few more things here with the, with the repository. Uh, let's say I want to do book, uh, find uh, book by publication year between. Uh, I'm using um, IntelliJ Ultimate, so it already it auto completes uh, this repository stuff, which is really cool. Uh, higher int lower. So I'm. Oh, sorry. Higher. So what I want to do here is I'm adding a method that will find all books that are published between those two years. Uh, now I want to expose that. So let's go get mapping and I'm going to use a path param here. So I'm going to say year between oops, lower and higher. And I'm going to say path variable. So this is, I'm using Spring's path variable here. I want to say book repository find between lower and higher. So now if I just hit this endpoint, uh, which should be a year, oops, sorry, book year between. So year between, uh, if we go back to all the books, there we'll see that they're all published between like 2011 and 2018. Uh, so if I go book, I'm oh, sorry, year between 2010, 2020, I see them all. If I go 2015, 2017, then I only see um, 2018. I get all the books between 2015, 2017, 2018. So that was, uh, that's just regular spring stuff, right? That you can write so quickly, so easily. Um, okay, one, let's uh, see a little more uh, intricate uh, spring web stuff. Uh, so let's say I wanted to um, have some kind of exception uh, that when I'm looking up a book uh, and it's not found, I want to return, I want to have some special handling. So I'm going to say book missing exception. This will extend runtime exception if I can actually write that properly. Runtime exception. Ah. Runtime exception. So uh, with Spring, a lot of times what you do here is that you want, whenever this exception is encountered in the web layer, you want to return a specific uh, status code, HTTP status. So I'm just going to like, I'm going to pick bad request here. Um, and what I'm going to do is that like when I do public book find by ID here and get mapping ID, long ID. This is going to be a path variable, um, book repository, find by ID. So this returns an optional, um, but I want to handle it like my own way. Uh, so I want to throw, oops, I want to throw the exception if it's not found. So I'm going to say optional or else throw new uh, book missing exception. So now I should see, okay, let's go to all books. Ah, right, yeah, compilation error, obviously. Um, I'm just gonna restart that here because I messed things up a little. 
Okay, so I'm going to see all books, and the book IDs are from 1 to 6. So if I get the first one, it should work. But if I get the 10th one, uh, there's nothing there, right? Uh, so it returns it returns the bad request of 400 that I uh, – it returns 400 because I selected here that, yeah, you should return 400. That's, uh, that's one way of uh, handling exceptions. We'll see another one really quickly after I add some security. So let's say we want to add some security to uh, to my application. What I would do in this case, I'll go ahead and add um, the security and the security extensions I need. So I, I'm going to add Spring Security uh, to take to, so I can leverage uh, Springs like pre-authorized annotation. But I'm also going to add this uh, Electron Security Properties file. What this will allow me to do, this extension here, uh, will it will allow me to like an uh, use some really simplified configuration for what my users and what the roles of the users will be. So they'll just use properties files to, I'll just use properties files to define those users. Uh, and I have those users in here somewhere. Yeah, okay, so the configuration is that like use the properties files. Uh, I have two files, test users and test roles. So go in here, test users, I'll say uh, the first users George with username George password George second geo password geo um, and now the roles I define as file oops sorry got that wrong file test roles so um, if I remember correctly which I don't um, yeah I think I let me com just compare this to to what I already – yeah, okay, so what I already have the, in case I don't remember. So what I did is like uh, the username, I tell it it has the admin role, and the other username has the viewer role. So I'm going to go to the controller, and I'm going to say book controller here. I'm going to say like um, you can't the, – the only person that can access this is the admin, pre – uh, I need to refresh the ID to pick up the, the, new, uh, the new dependency. Pre-authorize, and I'm going to say um, has role min. Excellent. So how do I test this? Because um, this is going to use basic authorization, right? So how I'm going to how I'm going to test it is I'm going to use uh, IntelliJ's like built-in HTTP support. Um, which then I'm going to use get. Okay, so I'm going to get, oops, excuse me, this was wrong. Okay, so what this is going to do, it's going to create um, a get request, uh, and the, the initial get request will have, like, no authorization. So I expect that because I'm using this book controller uh, pre-authorized, so I should only be able to see the book, um, from book slash uh, ID if I have the admin role. So the user, this initial request has no uh, user, so I shouldn't be able to see it. So let's go ahead and hit that. And I got 401 unauthorized. So obviously the, um, the unauth unauthenticated user cannot view it. So let's try uh, the user that has the Oh, looks like we did we lose Georgios? Yeah, we lost him. We lost him just just at the height of his security <laughs> just security uh demo. Um let's see if he comes <laughs> back here in a second here. Looks like he dropped out completely. Man, this has been a challenging day technically for us. Um Daniel, are you well, I guess let, let me let me stop there and, and and reiterate a few things that the with Quarkus has a spring compatibility layer. So obviously it makes it easy to transition for if you're an existing spring developer, um, you know, coming to the world of Quarkus, it, this compatibility layer, which is web data security, data, excuse, web data security, I think there's a few others. It gives you the APIs to be able to transition smoothly. Oh, Giorgio, you're back. How long was I off? So you were just at the height of adding your admin, adding your user to your admin group, like just at the height of it. It was like everyone was waiting oh. for a bated breath. <laughs> so. Oh wow! 
Oh man, uh, what do you what do you want me to do? Want me to start from start from that part because I, I like didn't even notice that I dropped off. Yeah, yeah, I guess let's let's do it because because this is gonna be recorded. So let's see if you can get back to that point. So I think you had you had showed the uh, unauthorized uh, request because it wasn't in the group, so you were changing your config file. Okay, okay. So let me share again. Uh, share screen. Okay, so can you see my screen now? Yep, you're back. Okay, great. So uh, I had added these, right? And uh, I was showing um, how to do requests. Uh, had I added this file? You were just doing that. You you had uncom you had commented it out, and you were uncommenting it. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, so the basic idea was with with uh, IntelliJ, I can uh, script like these uh, HTTP requests. So the idea was that uh, I have a user uh, that's an admin. I have a user that's just a viewer. The whole request is um, protected by admin role. So if I hit the if I hit the 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 endpoint without an uh, logged in user, an authorized user, I get unauthorized. If I hit the uh, the admin with a user, a proper user, but that doesn't have the role, I get uh, forbidden. And if I actually use the user that's that does have the proper uh, role, which is admin. Then I'll actually see what I wanted to see, uh, which is the book with ID one. If I go two, I'll get two. Uh, so that's uh, yeah, I think that's uh, all I had. Well, I mean, there's a ton more stuff, but uh, let's uh, leave it at that for now. And you can always ask questions and uh, ping me for on all the channels that uh, Jeff mentioned earlier. So uh, let's hand it over to Daniel. Yeah, real quick, while Daniel is uh, grabbing the screen, George, I was mm -hmm. I was telling people that this compatibility layer really that one of the goals is obviously to ease the transition from spring developers to move to Quarkus. So it's an environment that they're familiar with. Obviously they have the ability to, um, to switch and change APIs if they prefer a different um, framework or, you know, library extension. So um, anything to add to that? Uh, any tidbits? Uh, yeah, actually. So th you can use like uh, both uh, modes in the same application, right? Uh, so you can use like JPA, and you can use sorry Jax or SN Spring Web, but you can uh, use like uh, Panache and uh, Spring Data. Uh, but what we usually see is like people start out with the Spring stuff because a lot there's a lot of Spring developers there, and they want to try out Quarkus without like having this mental leap of learning everything. Um, so let, we see a lot of people like start out with this, start getting productive, and then going to the more uh, Quarkus idiomatic uh, route, like using the the more Quarkus uh, native. APIs, but that's not a that's not a, something that someone has to do. Um, you can pick and choose uh, whatever whatever suits you or your organization. Nice. So you got options. Good. Yeah, exactly. Good. Yeah. And obviously, developers always enjoy options. Um, with that being said, what we want to do is transition to Daniel O. And we obviously one of the subcategories of this hackathon and one of the compelling use cases for Quarkus is serverless. And um, we support obviously more than uh, just using AWS Lambda, but it seems you know AWS Lambda was the first on the scene, probably most widely used at this point. So we thought it'd be a great uh, opportunity to kind of give you some more information on how Quarkus can integrate with AWS Lambda. So Daniel, take it from there. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, that is a really awesome demo, Georges. Okay, so oh, let's talk about, Thanks. yeah, cool. That's really awesome. So yeah, let's, let's take a look at that, the Amazon Lambda with the Quarkus, how to help you out. So we have a, a, a couple of the uh, Amazon Lambda extension Quarkus provides, and then uh, you can pick it up, whatever you need. And uh, there are Amazon Lambda with the, uh, uh, just the, uh, deploy your Microsoft application with the Quarkus and deploy Amazon Lambda function, uh, the Amazon runtime. And also uh, you can uh, deploy the Amazon function with the HTTP protocol with some RESTful API based on the Bird X web and the undertow subway container and the JaxRS based on REST Easy. And now we have uh, one more uh, very interesting and comparable feature, the Quarkus Funky. It's a simple API. Uh, it aims to provide a standard portable Java API and the developer uh, deploy your Microsoft application as the, the, the function. Uh, into a uh, multiple serverless platforms such as Amazon Lambda and Azure Function and KNAV and KNAV Event, etc. 
And you can also export your function over HTTP protocol as well. So let's jump in the demo. So, so before we get started, so I'm pretty sure you are already uh, play with the code quarkus.io and uh, you can find a lot of the Amazon rate extension. Like you can type in Amazon here and you got a lot of the Amazon uh, related uh, Quarkus extension like Amazon Lambda and Camel and even the Amazon uh, Alexa, uh, you can use that uh, as a Quarkus extension. Okay, here we go. Uh, here is my uh, DBS code ID tool and I already put down the sample application to uh, uh, to build and deploy the application in Amazon Lambda function. So uh, just quick, uh, take a look at that Palm XML. It's a Maven project. And uh, today I'm gonna use the Quarkus funky Amazon Lambda uh, extension. And you can also add any Quarkus extension uh, such as the Lambda, Amazon Lambda, and Amazon Lambda HTTP. And uh, you can also use Amazon Lambda X-Ray to trace your all function. Uh, it's a pretty cool another stuff. And so, so here's the application here, the uh, greeting function. It's a, a very normal, uh, the just uh, using CDI injection and uh, just the uh, implement in input and output message uh, when you call uh, this uh, application. But one thing you need to uh, change this application as a function, just to use the func annotation here. So func annotation is a simple API. I mean, uh, the, one of the beauty of the, the, the func of Quarkus is a new uh, strategy, strategy of the serverless functionality. And then this funky API uh, uh, create a new uh, IPC framework and then it enable uh, the Java, de Java developers to have on uh, the, the no overhead and uh, small memory footprint. And also maybe sometimes the less flexibility, but it's maybe more smaller and smaller and faster and start up for your runtime on top of the, uh, the serverless platform. So, so when you add this uh, font queue annotation on your method, and uh, the function name uh, will be your method name. For this case, it's greet your function name. And you need to put the function name in your application portfolio here, the Quarkus funky uh, dot export is greet. So here's a more couple of the function here. So hello and the two row case. And you can also specify your function uh, name with your own purpose with some parameter, like a double or whatever you need. So let's try to uh, package this application here. So I'm gonna use a Maven uh, package, command line, uh, clean package, and I'm gonna skip the unit test today to uh, reduce my time. And uh, during the uh, packaging this application, you can find that a lot of generated code on the target directory, for example, here's a uh, function G file, include all required uh, Amazon, uh, the, the the function uh, deployment, uh, specifically Amazon Lambda. And uh, we have a two uh, script uh, file. I mean, actually a deployment script based on YAML format for running on the Amazon Lambda Java runtime. And the other one is the Navy comparison. So you can use the, uh, the uh, one of the, uh, the disk deployment script when you deploy uh, this application into Amazon Lambda. And also, uh, we have the here is a bash script. So this is one of the beauty of the, the funky uh, extension. So you just need to use this uh, bash script to deploy and create an update delete to your application and deploy into Amazon Lambda. You don't need to use the Amazon CLI at all because this uh, manage uh, bash script uh, uh, allows you to uh, make the same thing. All right. So as part of the development process, maybe you are uh, looking for to some uh, uh, test environment before you deploy this application into Amazon Lambda, actually. So the luckily Amazon uh, provides uh, the serverless application model uh, with some CLI, uh, the name the same CLI to simulate your application 
the Amazon, the Lambda function deployment. So let's try to use that. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, same CLI, invoke the template. I'm going to use the JVM script, and uh, I'm going to pass down payload with the uh, payload JSON. So, so in this case, I'm going to pass the, I'm going to uh, payload the, the name Bio, and my application here uh, return the service name Hello Bio. Did you expect the result? So let's try to that. So one thing you need to uh, run uh, the local. Uh, testing using same CLI, you need to run uh, the Docker container because the Docker container and the spin of this very uh, tiny minimal, the Amazon Lambda environment on your local machine. So now we got the hello view here. So maybe let's try to change it, the payload, uh, the, uh, the test to different use case. Like uh, some name, I'm gonna change the name. My name is Daniel and I'm gonna save that and I'll just retry to simulate this application without no code change here. And uh, the return code, hello, Daniel. Okay, let's try to uh, deploy uh, another function. So I'm gonna use uh, one of the application here. Okay, let's try to the lower case here. And the one thing I needed to do is change the function name here. And also back to the, uh, the greeting, uh, is kind of uh, maybe uh, just uh, the capital Daniel, okay? And try to one more time packaging this application. And then uh, let's try to one more time to uh, using the same uh, CLI. So now we got uh, so, uh, the lowercase Daniel here. So this is a very uh, simple, this I already mentioned here, you, go, you just need to, uh, the font queue annotation on your <clears throat> method level, and then you're gonna put in the, your function name, your application property file, and then you could simulate the same CLI when you install on your local machine, and then you can uh, testing uh, without actual deployment. Now we're gonna deploy this application. Let's say, oh, we just done uh, to write my <clears throat> function. And the next step, we're gonna deploy this application in actual Amazon Lambda. So, so I'm gonna to log in my uh, Amazon Lambda with my credential here. There are a couple of things uh, you needed to uh, do. Uh, let me try to log in first. Okay, so in order to deploy the uh, Quarkus application using FunQ API, you need to create your own role here. Uh, go to the Identity Access Manager, and uh, you got to create a new role here. So the name is the lambda dash low, and because we're gonna use the the low the Amazon the resource name here. So because this is a map to uh, your Lambda resource uh, with the, uh, your local application deployment. So go back to here and go to uh, manage script. And actually there are a couple of ways to uh, uh, find uh, your the image or resource name. So for example, you can put in the, your, the resource name on your the, the manage script. So for example, the uh, the resource name here equals my resource here. I'm gonna save it. And to use the, uh, the script, the target directory and the manage script, and I'm gonna create at this time. Just make sure, go to my uh, Lambda service and go to function. There's a no function at this moment. And then I just created my application. It takes a couple of seconds. Uh, to deploy uh, my application into Amazon Lambda. Okay, I just done, I got a successful message and try to reload this application and I got a new application just deployed. And once you click on in this function and you can test it actually, uh, first you need to define your payload in a JSON format. So we just deploy the lower case. So I'm gonna to, uh, create an, like a uh, Quarkers uh, like a global quarkers uh, 
hackathon here and I'm gonna create this part. The name is just demo. Just demo and create this one and test the application and go to detail. Now we got a low case here. And you could change the, the payload just like the, we did uh, using the, the payload JSON file on my local environment. You can change the, uh, the, the payload uh, to uh, multiple use case for your testing. And let's try to redeploy and uh, the, the other uh, the function. Go to my IDE and then uh, just change the uh, application. Just go back to the original uh, function grid. And then just one more time, Maven package here. But during the, uh, just be sure during the, you, once the Maven package again, you are all the, this, the generation code, like a ma the manager batch script will uh, regenerate, which means you know, the, the, you are the Amazon Lambda resource name is already gone. So here I'm gonna show you a different way to you can put in the that Amazon resource name when you run uh, your the manage bash script, for example, uh, AL, the ALN and something like that. Uh, you can put in the your the resource name here and uh, just call the method, uh, the manage bash script. But in this case, I'm not going to uh, create again. Just I just update here. So once the the, the new function is updated and successful and go to Amazon Lambda. And first thing, I'm gonna change it uh, here, uh, like a JSON format. The name is the, uh, what I say, like the Daniel. And I'm gonna save this test event and hit the test. And we're gonna hello Daniel. So this is the uh, uh, one of the way. Uh, actually, I uh, told I, I actually um, strongly recommend to use the Quarkus Funky when you use the Amazon Lambda functionality when your project. So this is a very simple way to add the funky annotation on your method level, and then you can change the uh, different uh, method uh, the uh, with the funky annotation when you need to deploy your application in the uh, Amazon Lambda, and also there are more a couple of the uh, Amazon uh, function, uh, the extension like Amazon Alexa and X-ray, even the camel integration, your Amazon Lambda, etc. Okay, uh, I think it's done, and I will go back to the slice deck and uh, change the present mode, and I'm going to hand it over to Jeff. Yeah, I just wanted to finish out. Thanks, uh, Georgios and, and Daniel, <clears throat> for those great demos. Um, sorry for the technical issues again. Hopefully you're, you're watching this uh, in recording and, and didn't waste too much time. But wanted to finish off and just always let you know that there's other great resources out there. If you haven't seen them yet, um, obviously the, the best place to start is Corcus.io. Uh, extensions, guides, uh, blog posts, all those, that, that's the, the best place to start with. Uh, there's also some additional resources uh, from the Red Hat developer perspective and get access to interactive tutorials. Um, there's also a ton of webinars on the YouTube channels. And also if you, the, the getting started is, is, there's a getting started guide, obviously at, that uh, Daniel showed you the corcus, code.corcus.io. If you want to just create a project from scratch and get some uh, scaffolding and some uh, hello world type applications, those are there. Uh, so a ton of great resources, and there's a you know plugins for your favorite IDE as well. So just keep those in mind. Uh, next, next slide. And uh, really, that's it. Uh, the, re the rest of these slides are just kind of an overview of the hackathon. So if you are attending here, you're probably more than familiar with this. Uh, so corcus.devpost.com is a, is obviously the place to register. So with that being said, please another request, um, please. Participate in the discussions. Go to the Zulip channel. Uh, ask us what you're interested in. Uh, I think next week we, we've got some reactive uh, programming lined up, and I think after that we're also going to do some stuff around uh, creating your own extension. So uh, we're all ears. We're, we're here to support you in, in this uh, hackathon, so let us know what you guys need. So with that being said, I'm going to finish the, uh, the session here. Thank you. Thanks a lot.